Hi yogis, welcome to my channel. My name is Cassandra and today I'm here in my little home yoga studio with Cleo and we are going to do a yin yoga class that is all about increasing your spine flexibility. So if you've been trying to get into some deeper back bends, these are the perfect poses to help get you there. Of course, they're going to work on spine mobility, but we're also going to work on opening up our shoulders a little bit at the same time. So the props that you'll need for this practice are two blocks. We are going to be begin in supported fish pose. So if you've never done supported fish before, you need to put one block underneath the upper back between the shoulder blades and the other block goes underneath the back of the head. Depending on the flexibility that you already have, you might want to start just with the block at its lowest level. Otherwise, we're gonna boost it up at the second height. I'm just gonna move my blanket down a little bit here. So if you've never done this pose before, you do need to gauge it first and lower slowly onto it. So the first block again in between the shoulder blades. So the upper back has some support. And then the second block underneath the back of the head so the neck has support. You can either keep your legs straight out in front of you or I'm just gonna bring the soles of the feet together to touch, let the knees fall apart. And then you can turn your palms to face up. Take the time here to get yourself settled and comfortable in this pose. Just a nice way to open up our practice. Letting the shoulders drop and the eyes can close. And letting yourself be supported by the blocks underneath you. So it goes without saying, if you have any injuries in your spine, like a bulging disc or anything like that, this really is not the practice for you. Only do this if your spine is healthy. Taking some deep cleansing breaths in and out through the nose. important for you in this practice to gauge where your limit is. Never going too far or pushing too much. Just finding the edge that works for you. you're doing this practice at home and you have pets, let me know if your pets do the same thing as Cleo. She can very rarely leave me alone when I'm on my yoga mat. And to be honest, I don't really mind it. It's kind of cute. 
And I don't know if you can hear, but she is purring so loud. <laughs> Take your last minute or so here and supported fish. If you had your legs in a butterfly shape, like what I'm doing here, you can lift the knees back up so the feet go flat to the floor. And we'll be easing our way off of the blocks and laying on our belly. So you can curl your chin to your chest to move off of the first block, then lift yourself off of the other one and just turn so that you're laying on your stomach. We'll be coming into Sphinx pose. So no props needed for this one. So for Sphinx, your forearms are on the ground, palms and elbows about shoulder width distance apart or so, point the toes back, and just think of lifting the chin and lifting the chest. Your chin is roughly parallel to the floor. You're pulling the shoulders back. If this is too much, you can walk your palms further forward to lessen the intensity of the back bend. <laughs> Otherwise, you can lift it a little further up. I like to keep the elbows directly underneath the shoulders. And reach your tailbone to your heels. Try to create some space in your low back. Think of pulling the heart forward. Now from this Sphinx pose, you're gonna turn your left forearm about at a 45 degree angle. You're gonna bend into your right knee and catch a hold of your right foot with that right hand. And think of bringing that heel in. So you might be a little bit more toward here, otherwise you can flip your grip and press down on the palm. So this will help us open up into the quads. It compresses a little bit more through the lower back to improve our back bends, but if you're working on poses like bow or like wheel, you do need to have some pretty open hip flexors to get deeper back bends. So full minute here.
and release the hold of that right foot. And we'll switch sides. So your right forearm is at about a 45 degree angle. You're gonna bend into your left knee and catch a hold of the foot or the ankle wherever you can. Flip your grip if that's possible. Keep your chest lifted. One minute here. the left foot so we'll make our way into a laying spinal twist or sorry a laying chest opener so stay on your belly you're going to reach your right arm out to the side and keep that right elbow bent at a 90 degree angle so you roughly want the elbow in line with the shoulder and the palm is flat to the to the floor from here you're going to roll onto your right hip right shoulder and right ear and you can bend the knees. And you might wanna stay here or you can go a little bit further by bringing your left hand to your low back. Drawing the shoulders away from the ears.
And then let's start to unwind from the pose. So you can roll onto your belly. We'll just move over to the other side. So this time your left arm reaches out, bending the elbow and keeping that elbow bent at a 90 degree angle. The palm is flat to the floor. Start to roll onto your left hip, left shoulder and left ear. So the right hand can press into the floor to help you draw the right shoulder down the back. Or you can go a little further by bringing your hand to your low back. And get yourself comfortable here in the shape so that you don't need to fidget or move or readjust anything. And remind your jaw to relax. The head to be heavy. And let's release the pose on this side so you can bring your right hand back in front of you if it was on your low back. We're rolling onto your stomach and we're gonna make our way onto hands and knees in our tabletop pose, setting ourselves up for a puppy stretch. So a really great way to set up for back bends. I'm just gonna move my blanket out of the side because I won't need it. 
So from tabletop pose, make sure you are aligning your hands underneath your shoulders and your knees underneath your hips. So your hips are always going to stay directly over the top of the knees. This does not change. The only thing that's going to change is your hands will walk forward and you're going to drop the forehead down to the floor or to a block. And keeping the arms extended, you can melt your belly a little bit to the ground. So normally I encourage people to keep their core engaged so there's not too much of a dip in the low back, but because we are focusing on increasing our back bends and increasing spine flexibility, for this one, really try to arch a little bit more. Of course, if there is discomfort or pain, you'll know you've gone too far into it. Let's start to ease out. So you're going to lower back into Sphinx Pose. So lower back onto your stomach, but we're gonna take it a little bit further this time. So seal, or sorry, Sphinx Pose, you had your forearms to the ground with the palms planted to the floor. You can either do that if that feels like enough of a spine stretch. If you'd like to take it further, we will go into seal. So here you need to press the palms into the ground in order to lift the elbows off the mat. So this is definitely a deeper back bend. Make sure that you are not pushing yourself too far. Draw the shoulders back. Keep a light bend in the elbows just so you're not locking the joints. And you might need to widen your feet to take some of the pressure off of the sacrum. Think of pulling the heart forward. And again, you control how deep you go here. So the further you bring your palms out, the less intense this will be. The closer you have your hands to your hips, the deeper it will be. So just find that sweet spot. We're here for about three minutes or so.
bend the elbows, lower back down. So we're gonna come back onto hands and knees, taking a different and deeper variation of that first puppy stretch. So you will need to have both blocks here. And place your blocks on their lowest height. Instead of having our arms stretched out in front of us, we're gonna keep the elbows bent. And all you're going to do here is bring your elbows on your blocks. Keep your hips roughly over the knees and you're gonna press your hands together as you melt the heart and melt the chest down. You're gonna bend the elbows so that the palms come to rest to the back of the neck and the back of the head. So you should feel this a lot more in the triceps, a lot more in the shoulders and maybe into the chest and upper back as well. If it's too much, just do the regular puppy stretch again with the arms out in front of you. Make sure you're still breathing in this pose. Feel your rib cage expand front to back and side to side. Let's straighten the arms. Take your time coming out of this shape. So you can set your props off to the sides. We won't be needing them anymore. 
We're gonna come back into seal pose, but we're only going to be holding it for one minute because we're gonna take one last variation from here, the deepest version of seal. So you lay down on your belly, you press the palms into the ground to lift the chin and lift the chest up, just like we did. You're welcome to just hold it here for a minute. Otherwise, to go further, you're gonna bend the knees and as if you were trying to touch your toes to the back of the head. So just by doing this, you should really feel the posterior chain engage. So the line that starts from the crown of your head and moves down the spine into the back of the legs and the soles of the feet. So you do need a little bit of engagement here, but try to minimize it as much as possible. Pressing the shoulders down and back. Last five breaths. And we'll release, straighten the legs, lower your way down. That was a super deep back bend. So let's finish off with a laying spinal twist. You can just roll onto your back and bring your feet flat to the floor, knees bent. Reach your arms out to the sides and to T. And you can move your hips a little bit over to the right before letting both knees drop down over to the left. Either just keeping one leg stacked over the other or twisting a little deeper by wrapping the right thigh on top of the left one. Try to keep both shoulder blades pressing into the floor.
And let's lift the knees one at a time. Uncross the legs if that's what you were doing. We'll just move to the other side. Sliding over to the left and dropping the knees to the right. And either just keeping one knee or one thigh over the other, or you can cross them left thigh over the right one. Try to keep your left shoulder blade on the floor. And we'll lift the knees back up. To make our way into Shavasana, before we do that, it might feel good to just pull the knees into the belly. Giving them a little squeeze. And then take up some space, straightening out the arms and the legs. Turning the palms to face up. And just let yourself soften here. The spine is fully leveled.
Start to breathe a little bit deeper. Maybe wiggling fingers and toes or lightly turning the head side to side. You can take a big stretch, reaching up the arms overhead, getting really long. And we'll make our way up to take a seat. Eyes can stay closed as you do this. Just focus in. Sit up nice and tall. Palms can rest on the knees or the hands can draw together at the front of the heart. We'll close our practice with the chant of Om one time. Inhaling to chant. So inhale. Oh. Namaste. Thank you so very much, everyone, for doing this yin yoga practice for deeper back bends. Definitely take it easy tomorrow. This is an intense practice, but really practicing these poses on a regular basis would absolutely increase your back bend and your back flexibility and shoulder flexibility in the long run. So if you do practice this on a regular basis, please let me know if you see any progress and any benefits from this practice. I would really love to hear from you guys. As always, please do subscribe to my channel. It does help to promote and support free yoga on the internet. And myself and Cleo over here, <laughs> thank you very much for joining us today. Have a great day.